Hey everybody, I miss you guys. It's good to be able to come to you again with a story. Uh, hopefully things are going well for you. And today I want to read for you a story called The Lion's Bed. And it's about um, a big problem, but they find that when they work together, when they cooperate, they can turn a big problem into a little problem. The other thing I like about it is that they find out that when they use what they're good at, because we're all good at something, but if they only use it for themselves, it makes everybody weaker. But when they use what they're good at to help everybody, it makes everybody stronger. And I have to tell you, it's a little bit of a scary story, but don't worry, it has a happy ending. Here we go. The Lion's Bed by Diane Redfield Massey. Hornbill loved his green vine house in the top of the mango tree. The jungle is peaceful here, said Hornbill, biting on a mango seed. We all live together quietly, as friends should. He waved to his friend Anteater far below, busily collecting ants. 5,633, said Anteater. Not bad for a morning's work. And he panted, patted his ant basket with pride. Hmm, that's very good, said Hornbill. Anteater smiled. Mm-hmm. It's mangoes for you and ants for me. He said he twirled his ant basket and he did a little dance in the grass. Oh, it's coconuts for the monkeys and grass for elephants, roots for the peccaries and ants for me, sang Anteater. Ants, delicious ants for me. Hornbill stretched his wings and yawned. Oh, if we all ate the same thing... Yeah, we'd be fighting and quarreling over who was getting the most, said Anteater. Thank heavens, no one else likes ants. And he fastened the latch on his basket, and he sat down to rest in the shade. You haven't mentioned me, said Python, looking down from the vines above him. You haven't mentioned what I eat, who knows what you eat, said Anteater. You're always asleep up there. Not always, said Python. Anyway, you don't like ants, and that's all I care about, said Anteater. Suddenly, Elephant pushed his trunk through the vines. The peccaries are running through the grass, he said. They're very excited about something. They're always excited, said the monkeys. Imagine being excited over roots. They dropped their coconuts to the ground to crack them open and hurried down to find them. The peccaries came running up under the trees. The lion is coming! The lion is coming! They cried. They stumbled over the roots and fell in the grass. The lion? said the monkeys. He's coming to live in our part of the jungle, said a peccary. That's what the birds told us. Let's hide, cried the monkeys. Why is he coming here? asked Hornbill. He flew down and landed on a stone. Maybe there's more to eat over here, said Elephant. There's more of us, whimpered the monkeys. Or us, squealed the peccaries, and they covered their eyes with their hooves. <laughs> the monkeys were scrambling up in the trees. Python closed his yellow-green eyes. You won't bother me, he hissed. Hmm, said Anteater. I'm beginning to wish that lions liked ants. Well, they don't, said Python. They like ant eaters. Ooh, heaven, said Anteater. I'm going to make my house stronger. How, asked Hornbill. With vines and grass and maybe some sticks. That's not strong enough to keep the lions out, called the monkeys. You're going to have to hide in the trees like us. I can't climb trees, said Anteater. Neither can we, cried the peccaries. Anyway, said Anteater, you monkeys can't stay up there forever. How are you going to get your cracked coconuts in the grass? <gasps> oh no, sighed the monkeys. We hadn't thought of that. Elephants are too big to hide, said Elephant. What will I do? And then he trumpeted loudly. <coughs> the monkeys were quarreling among themselves. The peccaries began to cry. Quiet, shouted Hornbill. Everybody. Will everyone please be quiet? Everybody was. Only the birds in the far off trees were singing. Now, said Hornbill, you should all be ashamed. 
You're only thinking of yourselves, and here we are all friends. The monkeys came down to the lower branches, and Python opened his eyes. The peccaries peeked out between the vines, and elephants sat down in the grass. But what can we do, said Anteater. By ourselves, we can't do much, said Hornbill. But if we all work together, cooperate, maybe we can do something. Let's have a meeting, said Anteater. Here, said Elephant. The peccaries came out from under the vines. The monkeys jumped down behind them. First of all, said Hornbill, we have to decide which each of us is best at. I'm best with ants, said Anteater. We're best with coconuts, said the monkeys. I'm good at shaking things with my trunk, said Elephant. We're good at running, said the peccaries. And I am best at singing, said Hornbill. Squawking, said Python. Hey, what are you best at, said Anteater. Nothing. That isn't true, said Python. I'm best at something, but I won't say what it is. Eh, who cares, said Anteater. Please, said Hornbill, we mustn't quarrel. The lion will be here soon, and we have got to be ready. Hornbill hopped over next to the vines hanging from the mango tree. We'll make a great big bed right here under the vines. A bed, said everyone. What for? For the lion, of course, said Hornbill. A bed for the lion? I'll explain in a minute. Now hurry. So they hurried about, bringing grass and leaves, and they made a big, soft bed. Look, if they tried to do that by themselves, it would take forever. But since they worked together, they turned a big problem into a little problem. Let's see what happens. Perfect, said Hornbill. Anteater was thinking, are we making a bed so the lion can have a good night's rest before he eats us all for breakfast? Who said anything about a rest, said Hornbill. And then he whispered his plan to his friends. Okay, we'll pick the coconut, shouted the monkeys and they scampered off through the trees. I'll bring the ant, said Anteater, and he hid with his ant basket in the grass. We'll get ready to run, said the peccaries, and they hid behind the vines. And I'll wait behind the mango tree, said Elephant, where the lion won't see me. Good, said Hornbill. I'll sit above in my house. And Python, Python said nothing at all, his head was tucked under his great green coils. He's asleep, said Anteater. The sun went down behind the trees, and the moon came up round and white. The big grass bed looked silver in the moonlight, whispered Anteater. Shh, said Hornbill. I can see the lion coming through the trees. You see him coming through the trees? The lion was purring and licking his chops. Ah! What a breakfast I'll have, he said, but first I'll find a place to spend the night. He pushed his way through the dark trumpet vines, and there was the bed. What's this, he roared, a big grass bed in the middle of the jungle? I'll try it out for size. He lay down, curled up his great tail about him. Perfect, he purred. I'll have a good night's rest, and soon he was fast asleep. Squawk, 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 screech, squawk. Good grief, roared the lion. What's that? Oh, it's me singing, said Hornbill. In the middle of the night, growled the lion. Quiet. Thump, 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 bum, 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 bum. Ouch, roared the lion. What's going on around here? Oh, the coconuts are falling off the trees again, said Hornbill. They always do that at night. Good heavens, roared the lion. He turned over and closed his eyes. I think the coconuts are really falling out of the trees. Trample, 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 trample. Ooh, howled the lion. Something's trampling over my bed. Oh, those are the peccaries, said Hornbill. They run back and forth all night long. 
Why? asked the lion. You've heard of sleepwalking, haven't you? This is sleep running. Oh, sighed the lion. The mango tree began to shake. The vines were swinging back and forth. What's wrong with the trees? The lion said the lion holding his head. Oh, those are shaky trees, said Hornbill. They do that all the time. They do? Do you think the tree is really a shaky tree? The lion turned over and sat up again. Ah, something's crawling in my bed, he yelled. Those are just ants, said Hornbill. Ants? We have millions of ants in this part of the jungle, beyond Hornbill. I mean, billions, or is it trillions? The lion growled and closed his eyes. All at once, something large and heavy fell down from above. Help, roared the lion. Something's got me. The lion leapt from his bed. I'm going back where I came from, he roared. No lion would live in a place like this. And he hurried away through the trees. <gasps> He's gone, shouted the precarious running out from the vines. He's gone, cried the monkey swinging down to the grass. He'll never be back, said Elephant. I've got to find my ants all over again, said Anteater. But it was worth it. Hooray, cried Cornbill cried Hornbill. The lion is gone. But then he stopped. What was that got him at the last? I don't know, said Anth Anteater. Guess who, said Python. <gasps> Python, it was you? Of course it was me, said Python. That's what I could do. Well, said Anteater, not bad, not bad at all. Hooray for Python, shouted everyone, and hooray, they cried, for all of us. Anita rubbed his tired eyes. I'm going to sleep, he yawned. Good night, everybody, said Hornbill. He flew up into the mango tree and found his leafy bed. Good night, Hornbill, yawned his friends. Sleep well, and they all slept soundly under the moon in their peaceful, green-vined jungle. Hmm. So as we think about that, they all worked together. They cooperated. They turned the big problem of the lion into a little problem because they all worked together. If one of them would have tried it on their own, it would have been bad. Just like we have some things going on in our world now that seem like big problems, but we're all working together to turn those big problems into littler ones. And they used what they were good at. You remember? The monkeys were in the trees, and when the lion came, what did the monkeys do? They threw the coconuts. Oh, and do you remember what the elephant did? When the lion was falling asleep, he shook the tree and made the tree shake back and forth. Hmm. And of course, the peccaries, which when I was in Texas, we called them javelinas. They ran across him, and anteater let all of his ants out so they would crawl on the lion. They all used what they were good at to help everybody, and it turned out great. So while you're at home, even while you're other places, think of ways that you can cooperate to turn big problems into little problems. And think of ways you can use what you're good at to help others, and it will make us all stronger. Have a great time. Hopefully I'll hear from you soon. See ya.